Good night tonight. Morning, boys. How are you? Morning, Jim. Yeah. Morning, Jim. You see in the paper here, it shows the weather map for tomorrow. It shows this low. It's going to go way south of Iowa. It's not going to rain tomorrow. Well, just a half hour ago on the radio, they said it was supposed to be rain changing the snow by midnight. Well, I don't see a thing out that window, rain or snow. <laughs> Look at old Chef's ear standing right up. He knows it's going to rain. Well, I'll guarantee it will. The way this arthritis is getting me in the knee again. As we all know, 100% accurate weather forecasts are still not possible and probably never will be. However, today you have tools available to you to help make weather-related maintenance decisions your predecessors never dreamed of. Tools that are definitely better than old chef's ears. In this video, you'll learn about the many tools and data you can use. You'll become familiar with terms like ARWIS, AWOS, plus many others, and you'll learn some of the basics about winter storms and frost, how they form, and how quickly they can change. But before we flood your head with a host of new terms and information, keep in mind the best weather detectors yet are your own two eyes. If it's snowing, you know it's snowing, even if the radio, TV, and your neighbor predicted no snow. But it's hard to predict the weather with just your own eyes. You must rely on a number of weather information sources. Start at home with your local television and radio stations. They are good sources of weather information for your area. If you have satellite or cable TV, the Weather Channel is a source of constantly updated information on major weather systems moving across the country. You can also call the toll-free number of the forecast service under contract to the Iowa DOT for forecast information. Once you arrive at the shop, you have the DTN Weather Center and computer available to you to access forecasts and current conditions information. If you have internet access, there is a variety of up-to-date weather information available including radar, National Weather Service information, and much, much more. In many areas of the state, weather radio in most trucks provides up-to-the-minute National Weather Service information 24 hours a day. And talking to personnel in other Iowa DOT shops in the path of an approaching storm can be very helpful in predicting the intensity and timing of the storm. Day in and day out, you will probably learn to rely heavily on the weather information at your shop. Currently, the DTN Weather Center supplies this information on current conditions, forecasts, and pavement conditions. From your DTN Weather Center, you can access weather information from a number of sources, including national and regional radar maps, U.S. satellite maps, current conditions, national and local forecasts, and specific Iowa DOT information. The national radar map provides you with the big picture what precipitation may be headed your way. When a storm is imminent or upon you, the central region radar gives you an indication of where precipitation is falling and the intensity of the precipitation. The U.S. satellite map shows the cloud cover throughout the nation. This can give you clues to the weather systems that may affect you and when clear skies can be expected. The current conditions is exactly that, what is currently happening. Among the many current conditions that may be helpful to you are central winds, central air temperatures, sky conditions. The surface analysis map shows weather fronts and the high and low pressure areas that are driving the weather patterns. Help screens are available for many of the DTN weather displays that give details on the source of the information, how often the information is updated, and other valuable information. Iowa DOT information is the weather information most specifically targeted for winter maintenance. Here you will find site-specific pavement temperature forecasts, frost forecasts, as well as a state summary of current pavement information. Where does this information come from? Several sources, but an important source of your local weather and pavement conditions information is the Roadway Weather Information System, or ARWIS for short. Started in 1989, ARWIS is made up of a network of weather and roadway conditions reporting sites across the state. The information recorded at each one of the sites is collected and sent to many Iowa DOT shops through the computer network. Hourly summaries of ARWIS can be accessed via your DTN Weather Center. Or it can be accessed in a more timely, more detailed display on a computer equipped with the correct hardware and software. This is what a typical RWIS station looks like. Atmospheric information recorded at each site includes air temperature, dew point temperature, relative humidity, wind speeds and gusts, 
wind direction, and precipitation. Some locations include more sophisticated weather instruments called optical weather identifiers, AWIs, that can detect more than just the presence or absence of precipitation. The AWIs can detect the type of precipitation, the precipitation intensity, and a precipitation rate. Pavement information collected at each ARWIS site includes pavement temperature, normally at both the bridge approach and the bridge deck. These two temperatures provide the most vital information collected by the ARWIS system. Whenever a storm is approaching and throughout the storm period, you should keep yourself well informed of bridge approach and bridge deck temperatures at the ARWIS site closest to you. Pavement temperatures can greatly affect the timing and type of winter maintenance plan you implement. Additional pavement information available from each ARWIS site includes subsurface temperature, a measurement of the ground temperature approximately 18 inches below the surface, pavement surface conditions such as dry, wet, or snow and ice alert, chemical factor, a number representing the concentration of the de-icing chemical on the pavement at the site, Freeze point, the temperature at which you can expect freezing, factoring in the de-icing chemicals present in solution, and percent of ice, percentage of ice crystals in the solution on the pavement. Site-specific forecasts are prepared by a third-party meteorological service using actual conditions data from each of the ARWIS stations, along with data, reports, and information from many other outside sources. Forecasts are issued at 4 a.m. in the morning and at 1 o'clock in the afternoon each day from October 15th to April 14th and can be accessed on your DTN Weather Center. The site-specific forecasts include road and bridge pavement temperature reported hourly, type of precipitation reported hourly, probability of precipitation reported every three hours, wind speed and direction reported every three hours, air, wind chill, and dew point temperatures reported every three hours. Precipitation, start and end time. Probability and timing of roadway frost, a different condition than frost that occurs on bridges. You can also access regional weather forecasts, a brief summary of the full forecast via a voicemail system from your telephone. Voicemail forecasts are recorded after the forecast is posted to the DTN weather centers. This near real-time information can be of use in many ways in identifying and fighting winter storms. First of all, if the ARWIS site is in your service area, it provides you with immediate and accurate information on what is happening out on the highway and bridges in your area. Truck-mounted infrared thermometers are another way to get real-time pavement temperatures. Even if there is not an ARWIS site in your area, information from a nearby site or sites can be very helpful. For example, subsurface and pavement temperatures at nearby sites can be very helpful in estimating those temperatures in your area. Also, ARWIS information from sites in the path of a storm headed your way can give you an early warning of weather conditions to expect soon in your service area. Road temperatures are affected by the temperature of the soil below the roadway air temperature, and the amount of direct sunlight reaching the road surface. It takes the soil longer than the air to warm up in the spring, so normally the subsoil is cooler than the air in the spring and can hold pavement temperatures well below air temperatures. In the fall, the reverse is true. Warmer soil temperatures tend to maintain pavement temperatures higher than the air temperature. Knowing the subsurface temperature at an ARWIS site in or close to your service area, as well as the expected air temperature and amount of sunshine, can help you accurately project road temperatures. At your DTN Weather Center, go to Iowa DOT and then select Current Pavement Conditions to access an hourly summary of pavement conditions at ARWIS sites across the state. You can also view all the site-specific forecasts from this Iowa DOT page. More timely and complete ARWIS information is available using a computer if one is available to you. Also a part of the Iowa DOT segment are frost forecasts for different parts of the state. The state has been divided into frost forecast zones. The frost forecast zones do not necessarily follow transportation center or area boundaries. Rather, they were designed to include areas that have many similar conditions that are conducive to the formation of frost. A frost forecast is issued for each of the zones at 4 o'clock in the morning 
and 1 o'clock in the afternoon each day from October 15th through April 14th. Frost forecasts are also available via the voicemail system. The automated weather observing stations, AWOS for short, are another reliable source of local weather information. There are 32 AWOS sites located at municipal airports across Iowa. These AWOS stations report air temperature, dew point, wind speed, and peak gusts wind direction and visibility. Reports are updated every minute, 24 hours a day. All garages have access to AWOS information, which can be accessed by phone, by computer, or on your DTN Weather Center. On your DTN, AWOS information is under current conditions and is part of the Iowa State Weather Roundup page. Although AWOS information is limited to atmospheric data, it can be a timely, accurate supplement to ARWIS information. If you are far from an ARWIS site but close to an AWOS site, this may be your best source of real-time weather information. Okay, now that you are aware of all of this weather forecast and pavement conditions information and know where it comes from, what does it all mean? What should you be looking for? And how are you going to use it? As you listen to and watch weather forecasts, there are terms with which you should become familiar. Air pressure, or barometer reading, has a great deal to do with our weather. Air pressure is measured by a barometer in inches of mercury. 29.92 inches of mercury is standard air pressure. A rising barometer or high pressure is generally associated with good or improving weather, while low pressure is responsible for storm events. Dew point temperature is another weather term you hear and see often. As we all learned in science class, the amount of moisture air can hold decreases when it is cooled. As the air temperature drops, there is a point at which the moisture in the air begins to condense and form fog, dew, frost, or precipitation. The temperature at which this occurs is called the dew point temperature. It is especially important to be aware of dew point temperatures in the early spring and fall when frost formation, especially on bridges, can be critical to highway travel. When dew point temperature rises above pavement temperatures, the easier it is for frost to form. The greater the spread, the greater the chance for frost formation. Frost should technically form on roadways when the dew point temperature is higher than the pavement temperature for a considerable duration of time, one to four hours. Frost may form on the roadway, but not on bridges in cases where the subsurface temperatures are colder than the air temperatures. This is most likely in the late winter or early spring. In these cases, the cold ground may keep the roadway surface temperature below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, resulting in road frost, even though the air temperature, bridge surface temperature, and the dew point are above 32. While there are not many things that are for sure when it comes to the weather, you can be absolutely certain wind always flows counterclockwise around a low pressure center anywhere in the northern hemisphere. On the other hand, wind always flows clockwise around a high pressure center. Though associated with tranquil weather, a high pressure system can also be responsible for Arctic cold air in the winter. Wind is created by differences in air pressure across an area. The larger the pressure difference from western Iowa to eastern Iowa, the stronger the wind will be across the state. Since air moves counterclockwise around a low pressure area, winds are from the southerly direction on the east side of a low pressure center and from the northerly direction on the west side of the low pressure center. High pressure centers are just the opposite. With the air moving clockwise around a high pressure area, winds are from the northerly direction on the east side of a high pressure center and from the southerly direction on the west side of a high pressure center. The wind flow around low and high pressure systems explains why the wind generally blows from the northwest after a snowstorm. The low pressure center which created this snowstorm moves to the northeast. Iowa is now located on the west side of the low, hence northwesterly winds. As a storm approaches Iowa from Kansas and Missouri, the wind often comes from the southeast in southeast Iowa and from the east in northern Iowa. After the low center moves out of Iowa, the wind again comes out of the northwest. The wind flow around low pressure systems explains why air temperatures in Iowa usually rise just before a major storm. As the low pressure approaches the state, 
warm air is pulled northward from the south because Iowa is on the east side of the low. One of the reasons weather forecasts are often difficult during winter is because it is not easy to determine how far north the warm air will go. If the warm air stays too far south, a predicted rain event can quickly turn into a major snowstorm. Another term we hear often is weather front. A front is a boundary in the atmosphere separating two different air masses. Cold fronts, as you would expect, have cold air behind them. The blue arrows on the front in this weather map indicate the direction the cold air is moving. After a cold front passes, stronger winds often occur. Warm fronts, of course, have warm air behind them, moving in the direction of the red bubbles on this map. Precipitation usually occurs along and ahead of a warm front. The third type of front is a stationary front that is a dividing line between warm and cold air. Stationary fronts, as the name implies, do not move in any direction. Clouds and light precipitation are often present in the vicinity of a stationary front. Precipitation can change form as it falls. The orange area represents relatively warm temperatures in the atmosphere. The blue represents cold temperatures below 32 degrees. When rain falls through warm temperatures in the atmosphere all the way to the ground, it reaches the ground as rain. It can also start as rain, but if the ground temperature is less than 32 degrees, the rain becomes freezing rain because it freezes as soon as it comes in contact with the ground. Sleet also starts as rain high in the atmosphere, but then as it falls, it hits enough freezing air to turn into ice pellets. Snow is ice crystals formed in freezing air high above that falls without changing form because air temperatures are below freezing all the way to the ground. In Iowa, the two most common types of winter storms are those originating in southern Canada and in the Four Corner region of Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. Alberta clippers, or Saskatchewan sweepers, as you might suspect, start in the Canadian provinces of Alberta and Saskatchewan. The storms move from Canada southeast to Iowa. These storm systems generally move very quickly and last only about six hours. Precipitation is usually light fluffy snow with accumulations of one to five inches, although higher amounts of snow can occur. Panhandle lows, on the other hand, rapidly intensify on the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains around the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles. The system then hooks to the northeast toward Iowa. A panhandle low usually moves at a slower speed that allows for a long duration of often heavy, wet snow with accumulations of up to 10 inches or more. With a panhandle low, the heaviest snow is usually 100 to 150 miles north of the track of the surface low pressure location. Freezing rain often occurs within 50 miles to the north of the track. Rain occurs along the track and south of the area. Panhandle lows often give weather forecasters fits because a slight change of less than 50 miles in the track of the storm will significantly alter which areas receive snow, freezing rain, or just rain. Satellite images like this can give you a general idea of a large-scale storm by showing cloud cover. Movement of or changes in cloud cover can indicate the direction of the storm movement, the intensity of the storm, size of the storm, and whether it's growing or waning. The whiter or brighter clouds appear on satellite images, the more likely they are to be producing precipitation. If clouds suddenly begin whitening, the storm is usually intensifying. If the clouds are becoming more gray, the storm is most likely waning. Radar images, on the other hand, can give you a good idea of specifics of the storm, where it is raining or snowing, which way the storm is moving, is it getting stronger or weaker. Radar is excellent for identifying the presence of precipitation. However, it doesn't do a very good job of identifying the type of precipitation. The color coding you see on radar maps is someone's guess as to the type of precipitation based on a few temperature reports. Generally, it is accurate, but from time to time, it can be incorrect. Radar beams go up and away from the radar dome, and that means it can sometimes look over the top of rain or snow if it is too far away. Most winter precipitation occurs at lower levels than summer precipitation, so the chances of the radar looking over the top are greater in the winter than the summer. 
If you are unsure as to the type of precipitation, it is a good idea to check Arwis site information for indications of precipitation for deteriorating road conditions in the path of the storm. Calling other garages underneath the precipitation is also a good idea. Although AWOS sites do not detect precipitation types, they do report visibility, which can also be helpful in determining the type and amount of precipitation. If fog is not occurring and visibility is one mile or less, snow is likely falling. In most cases, one mile visibility equals light to moderate snow, one half mile equals moderate snow, one fourth mile equals heavy snow, and less than one fourth mile visibility equals very heavy snow. Because of the way the radar beams extend out, there is also the chance of radar seeing snow in the clouds that isn't reaching the ground. This often happens at the start of a storm. Radar can also be fooled by melting snow, sleet, or hail. It can look heavier to the radar because particles are big or have a lot of water in them. Yet the precipitation that actually falls may not be any heavier than normal. When the barometric pressure is falling at stations, usually the low pressure system is moving closer. If a forecast expected a storm to keep moving closer through the night, but pressures begin to rise early in the evening, it is likely the storm isn't getting as close as expected or is weakening. These factors might suggest less precipitation will fall than forecasted. At those times of the year when air and road temperatures are similar, air temperatures are probably the easiest indicator to help you know how the forecast is doing. For instance, if an ice storm of freezing rain was forecasted to begin in the next few hours, but the current temperature has risen to 33, already above the forecasted high of 31, you can assume the threat of icing is much less. If six inches of wet snow is expected to accumulate with a temperature of 33, but it is now 36 with wet snow, you might expect much less will accumulate with the extra warming that has happened. With other weather conditions, you can learn helpful information by simply comparing observed values to predicted ones. If the wind direction is southeast and the forecast expected northeast winds, the storm is probably moving farther north than expected, and you might want to pay extra attention to the rain-snow line, which shows who is having rain and who is having snow. Rain will probably happen in some areas forecasted to have snow. Since the rain-snow line is one of the hardest things to forecast and the most important for winter maintenance, it can be valuable to keep track of how it moves over a period of several hours. To know where it is, you will need to look at surface stations that report the weather conditions, like Arwis or some National Weather Service sites. As we all know, weather forecasts are not always accurate because different forecasters make different assumptions about how a storm will move or change in intensity. Therefore, you need to rely on as many sources as possible to determine what actually is going to happen in your area. When sorting through all the weather and pavement conditions information available to you, there are eight key questions you should try to answer about an approaching storm. How soon will the storm start? What type of precipitation will fall? How much precipitation will fall? What are the pavement temperatures? What are the winds expected to do? What are the traffic patterns? When will the storm end? And what is the forecast following the storm? How soon will it start? There may be a start time forecast for a storm headed your way. However, it is always a good idea to try to fine tune storm start time information. If the snow is forecasted to start in two hours, take a look and see what radar shows. Does radar indicate any snow near enough to move in in two hours? A word of caution, however, looking at radar alone does not always provide a good estimate as to when it will begin snowing. For example, if it is snowing in Omaha and moving east at 30 miles an hour, Des Moines forecasters might say it should start snowing in central Iowa in five to six hours. But snow can develop overhead in times as short as 30 minutes, so storm start and end times can be changed significantly. In addition to checking radar, also check statewide ARWIS sites on your DTN Weather Center to find out what you can about what is happening on the surface at other sites. Remember, they are updated hourly. Or, for more immediate information, go to the computer and check on what is happening at the individual ARWIS sites. 
Do surface observations show stations with snow or rain nearby? Also, see if there are low visibility values in the nearby AWOS stations. Low visibility can mean it is snowing. If it seems to be snowing closer than forecast or further away, you can plan on being on the road at somewhat different times than you first expected. If you are confused because what you see actually happening outside does not match the forecast, you have an option. Make a direct call to the forecaster under contract to the Iowa DOT to get updated information and or an explanation of what is happening. What type of precipitation will fall? The forecast may indicate a time that precipitation is expected to change from rain to sleet or sleet to snow. However, this is so critical to your storm response, you will want to confirm what the situation actually is. Watch the radar and see where precipitation is falling. Then check Arwis for pavement and air temperatures, comparing areas where precipitation is falling and where it isn't. Also check AWOS station visibilities for clues, and probably most importantly, stay in close communication with your neighboring shops in the path of the storm. How much precipitation will fall? If the forecast calls for 8 inches of snow, but there isn't much precipitation near the storm on radar, or the cloud area on satellite looks gray or small, it is possible the air was drier than expected and much less than 8 inches will fall, even though the storm may take the exact path that was predicted. On the other hand, if only 2 inches are forecasted, but you see some heavy precipitation on radar, yellows, oranges, dark blues, and it looks like it will be covering you for at least a few hours, you might anticipate more snow than forecast. How much snow you think will fall will influence how you plan to attack the storm. What are the pavement temperatures, both current and forecasted? If the pavement temperatures are well above freezing, snow will have trouble accumulating unless the snow is unusually heavy, visibility one-fourth mile or less. Pay special attention to what is happening to the road temperatures and forecasted road temperatures at Arwis sites where the snow has been falling for the last one to two hours. Also, check subsurface temperatures. If subsurface temperatures are above freezing, it will be hard for the road temperatures to drop very quickly unless the air temperatures are far below 32 degrees. Pavement temperatures can be especially important for freezing rain events when air temperatures are very close to 32. What are the winds expected to do? Wind speed, direction, and wind shifts depend on so many factors in a storm situation that they are difficult to forecast. You may want to periodically check wind speeds and directions on the DTN Weather Center. Check both Arwis and AWOS data for current information at the sites around you to help you make judgments on how wind speed, direction, and wind shifts may affect your maintenance decisions. What are the traffic patterns? In areas with heavy rush hour traffic, you might want to pay extra attention to what the weather will do during those times to assist in treating. If light snow looks like it will begin at 7 o'clock in the morning, it might be good to pre-treat before the rush hour. If the light snow is not expected until 10 o'clock in the morning, you may want to wait to pre-treat when the rush hour ends. Again, radar and surface observations are especially useful in estimating conditions that should occur within just a few hours. When will the storm end? If the snow is expected to stop at 9 o'clock in the morning, you can probably count on the sun or daylight to help in snow removal. If it is not expected to end until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the amount of melting that will take place is reduced. If the snow will not end until 6 o'clock in the afternoon, there is little or no chance of melting. As you can see, a forecast that is only off by three hours can have a big effect on how and when you treat. You can estimate the ending time of the event by watching the back edge of radar echo, but be sure to also check the surface observations. Arwis sites and visibility at AWOS sites, since the precipitation might stop before the radar echo is completely gone. In this radar image, it appears that snow is still falling in eastern Iowa. However, Arwis sites in the area indicate that the snow has ended. In this case, radar may be seeing snow or rain higher up in the clouds. And the final question you will want to answer is, what is the forecast following the storm? Is the temperature going to nosedive? Are winds going to pick up considerably? What are forecasted road temperatures? Having a good idea of what is going to happen after the storm can greatly affect how and when you are going to treat the roadways.
The DOT's site-specific forecasts include a 48-hour forecast with the afternoon forecast, and the DTN has the National Weather Service forecasts that extend beyond the current time period. As I am sure you have learned from experience, the accuracy of weather forecasts tend to decline as the time period being forecast is farther in the future. Look at this Grinnell forecast map for tomorrow. It shows the low moving way to the south of Iowa. They say we're not going to get any rain. Now the new forecast says there could be some heavy rain and maybe a couple inches of snow. Oh man, we could be here for a while. If one forecaster thinks the low will move differently from another forecaster, we can have a change in the forecast. A change can also be the result of new data. In this case, the latest forecast has the low pressure center moving closer to Iowa. New data usually makes newer forecasts more accurate. It is always important to pay attention to what is currently happening with the weather. Radar is a great way of seeing what is really happening. Rich, look, the rain's already made it to Interstate 80. Radar trends can help you choose which forecast to believe. The low is definitely moving closer to Iowa than the old forecast expected. These observations say it's snowing in Ottawa now. But the radar isn't showing very much there. Radar doesn't show much snow there because it is too far from the Des Moines Weather Radar Station. That's funny. Ames isn't reporting anything yet, but the radar shows stuff there. The precipitation may be drying up before it reaches the ground. This is common at the start of a storm, especially if the air is cold and dry. As we discussed earlier, AWOS stations do not report precipitation, but they do report visibility. Often if the visibility is getting lower or has dropped a lot, it is raining or snowing at a station. I bet it's snowing in Atlantic now. Their visibility is down to one half a mile. In a winter storm situation, if visibility is under one mile, it generally indicates snow instead of rain. The radar shows precipitation isn't getting too far north of Highway 30. It must be too dry there. But snow is being reported in Des Moines. Good thing it's still October and the pavement temperature is still above 32 degrees. Yeah, it'll have to snow awful hard to get any accumulation on the roads. I agree. This was an actual Iowa storm, and here's what happened. By 4 a.m., about four hours later, up to three inches of snow had fallen in Atlantic with down power lines and trees. Roads were 50 to 100 percent snow and slush covered west of Interstate 35 and south of Highway 30. Driving was not recommended toward Omaha, where road and air temperatures had fallen to freezing. Total snowfall by 10 a.m. was generally 5 to 10 inches all along Interstate 80 from Grinnell west to Omaha, with less snow to the south and north. Roads did become snow and slush covered, but only for a few hours in the regions of heaviest snow since road temperatures stayed around 32 degrees or higher. After sunrise, road temperatures increased enough to melt the snow. As we review the events of this October storm, the first forecast expected the storm to miss Iowa to the south, with only light rain expected in southern Iowa. But then, as they often do, this panhandle low came much further north and the precipitation changed to snow. The snow was very wet, and because of warm pavement temperatures, it only stuck in areas when it accumulated very quickly. Throughout the storm, our operators used radar effectively to detect the further north movement of the storm. AWOS visibility observations were helpful in filling in radar's pitfalls, and Arwis pavement temperatures assured operators the snow would not bond once it hit the road surface. This was just one Iowa storm. With each new storm, you face a whole new set of circumstances, and that requires new decisions and new approaches to maintain safe travel on Iowa's highways. As this video has reminded us, weather is an ever-changing, hard-to-predict event that can greatly affect our lives, especially in the winter. Hopefully, you've learned something you never knew before about the weather. This video has also pointed out the many weather information sources available to you and how to access them. And you now know more about how to use that information to help you make wise weather-related maintenance decisions. Keep a good eye on the next low-pressure cell that heads your way.